Dave. Welcome to Old Steam Powered Machine Shop. Well, we got some things for you on this video. Uh, one of which is uh, a flashback to this summer uh, at the Kinzer Rough and Tumbled Steam Show in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania uh, that I was at. And uh, uh, I had some film clips of their Bessemer Cooper uh, pumping engine up there, which is a very, very big engine. Uh, it uh, uh, runs on, it was built to run on natural gas, of course, but they, they run it on propane. Uh, it's very similar to the snow engine that uh, I had in a video, and I can't remember the video number. I'll put it up uh, on the screen here for you. Uh, that was, I believe, 200 horsepower. This is 345 horse, and it's an immense engine. And they did a fantastic job with it up there. Uh, we got some other things, so stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy it. Another thing you got to be concerned about with belting, and I uh, explained this before, these belts are put together in sections, glued together, because I mean a cow is only so long, so uh, they have a long lap joint like this, and it's thinned out thin on the ends of the joint, and you can see this joint starts here on this side and here on this side. It's about maybe four inches long. When you put the, and they all go the same way. They're all set up the same way. So there's a right way and a wrong way to run a belt against the pulley. So when you're running the belt against the pulley, 
on this side here, it comes out thin here. So with the pulley here, you don't want the force to be going this way because it'll kind of scuff up the, the, the joint, the edge of the joint. You want the pulley to be exerting force this way so that, or the belt to be exerting force on the pulley that way so that if, if you can imagine slipping on the pulley, it's actually smoothing the edge over. So uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to see on an old belt, but if you look, you'll see where the joints are. And then I usually just put a marker arrow on one side here so I remember to get it the right way around. And also if you take a belt off and put it back on again, you got to remember which way it was on so that you're on it the right way. Here's a few antique lathe tools that I had. Uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, these are all blacksmith made and when you say blacksmith uh, most larger shops or railroad shops had a what they called a blacksmith shop but it was really a, a forging works. They usually had steam hammers and big equipment to hammer out things but uh, they would make the tooling for the machine shop next door and that's probably the case with this uh, I don't know where these came from a uh, few of them were given to me uh, I know some of them came from the Lehigh Valley Railroad shop in Saris, Pennsylvania um, but this is a parting tool angled parting tool it's kinda handy for getting in close to the chuck And here's another one. Um, this is, these next two are tools that you will see in most old machine shop manuals. And they're like from 1900 and before. Uh, it was very common uh, configuration and this is called a side cutter it's used for facing the sides uh, or the ends of a shaft or something you see it's hammered forged and then ground to shape and this was a very common thing called a diamond point and this is a, uh, a right hand diamond point side tool and uh, it's a pretty hard thing to forge and then these are boring different boring tools this is the boring tool I used on the uh, brasses for the uh, connecting rod for the steam engine that I'm overhauling. Um, here's a real small one. And these these can start out like if this gets ground away to almost nothing they the blacksmith shop would just bend a new end on it and they'd grind it again and use it up. Uh, and here's a small one. You could also use this as a threading tool, in, inside threading tool. Uh, there's a kind of a crude one. This is one that I actually made and uh, I used it one time on some brass and it, it worked okay. Just a piece of 4130 and I just hammered it out and ground a point on it. But You'll see these tools in my videos a lot because I'm going to try to use these as much as possible on different projects. Some of you have been asking about what happened to the electric power generation plan of a year or so ago. and. Uh, 
has been on the back burner. But uh, now that the uh, the small shop engine is available, uh, I wanted to hook a dynamo up to it, and this became available. Uh, it was in on the deal with the uh, big Richards engine, and it's a DC dynamo. I believe it's a Westinghouse. Uh, I'm not sure because the tag is long gone, but it has similar characteristics and uh, I don't know if it's 110 volt or it could be 32 but the plan is to get this operational and build a uh, platform for it um, I was going to try to uh, sort of match the uh, riveted angle iron uh, frame under the mill engine and belt this up to the ONS, the smaller ONS engine, to make uh, uh, lighting power in the shop. Several years ago, before I began this channel, uh, before I started shooting any video and I was getting started converting my old machines back to line shaft operation, one thing I was missing was a matching three-step pulley for the main shaft uh, to go on the overhead counter shaft along with the tight and loose uh, pulleys and the start and, sh and stop shifter. Well, I decided to make the pulley and these are just some of the still shots that I took really from my own reference and I thought you might be interested in seeing them. The first thing is to make a pattern and uh, out of wood and this is made out of one inch uh, ash boards sawed out with a bandsaw and glued together. And I chucked it up in the four jaw uh, on the lathe, which was run by electric power only at that time, and uh, roughed it out, uh, roughed out the first diameter. And then this has got the second diameter glued on it and chucked back up, and uh, roughing out the ID and uh, you can see uh, how much machining there actually is on this getting the inside and the outside uh, finished off and uh, this is the finished pulley with all three diameters and I left a bulkhead uh, two boards wide in the middle board it and put a wood dowel through there to core for the uh, uh, for the shaft uh, part of the casting and made some stiffeners uh, webs glued them in and then finished everything off with a little plaster to kind of smooth it up and you have to put uh, an angle a draft on uh, all the surfaces so that it'll pull out of the mold without disturbing the sand after you get it tamped in this is the finished casting back from uh, Cattail Foundry, just the way I got it. Uh, it's a really good job. And here you can see Emmanuel had it marked 148 pounds. He says, well, next time you make one of these, you might want to make it a little thinner. But I wasn't sure how much I'd have to leave uh, to get it to machine out good. And then this is chucked up in the lathe, and uh, I'm just machined uh, all three diameters, the, the matching diameter of the lathe pulleys. And uh, then uh, set up the taper attachment and uh, cut the crown the way we've been doing on the individual pulleys, the same way. Uh, it's about uh, well, three-eighths of an inch per foot taper 
and I tried to maintain a pretty good radius in the corners. Then uh, poured the uh, center out for the shaft and uh, this is installed over along the wall by the clock you can see uh, on the counter shaft and uh, in this shot you can see how the belts are arranged. Uh, the two pulleys to the right of it are the loose and tight pulleys. One of them is keyed to the shaft and one of them just spins free. And then you have a belt shifter with the two forks sticking down there that are hooked to that rod that moves side to side with the wooden lever. And when the belt is spinning that will shift from one pulley to the other and start and stop the lathe. Well thanks a lot for watching. And uh, next video will be coming to you from someplace down south.